My name is Bertha Vasquez. I am a third year maternal fetal medicine fellow at UPMC Pinnacle in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. The following was selected as an electronic poster at AIUM 2020 conference. The title of this case report is Prenatal Diagnosis of Vein of Gallon Aneurysm, a Case Report. Let's begin with a little background information. Congenital anomalies have been estimated to affect as much as 3 to 6% of the population. Arterial venous malformations of the brain have an incidence of 1.34 per 100,000 person years here in the United States. The central nervous system is one of the most frequent sites for prenatally diagnosed congenital anomalies with 10 per 1,000 life births when compared to other fetal systems representing less than 1% of all intracranial arterial venous malformations, the vein of gallon aneurysmal malformation, also known as VGAM, accounts for 30% of pediatric vascular malformations detected prenatally. VGAM can be an isolated finding, though it has been reported in addition to cardiac abnormalities, cystic hygroma, and other CNS lesions. VGAM is believed to be a result of abnormal arterial venous connections that occur between the 6th and 11th week of gestation. They have been thought to be persistent to abnormal arterial venous connections between the primitive choroidal vessels and the median prosencephalic vein of Markowski which creates a shunt that prevents involution of the embryonic vein and the subsequent development of the vein of gallon. VGAM has generally been diagnosed prenatally in the third trimester, although earlier diagnosis has been reported. Imaging modalities for diagnosis include both 2D and 3D ultrasound, and MRI. VGAM has become a potentially curable condition with some patients achieving normal neurologic development. This is due to modern endovascular techniques and specialized perinatal intensive care management. Because of this, identifying prenatal prognostic indicators has become imperative. In 2017, Caladini et al suggested that tricuspid regurgitation, major brain abnormalities or damage, and VGAM with a volume of more than 20,000 were variables significantly associated with a poor outcome. Today we present a case of prenatally diagnosed VGAM at 25 weeks gestation, confirmed with MRI, and managed with close follow-up throughout the pregnancy. A fetal ultrasound was performed on a patient at 25 weeks gestation for the evaluation of second trimester vaginal bleeding. The ultrasound showed no evidence of placental abruption. However, it revealed a midline brain vascular abnormality suspicious for an arterial venous malformation versus hemangioma versus VGAM. At this point, a recommendation was made for a consultation at an outside institution with a higher level of care. The consultation included an evaluation with a high resolution fetal ultrasound, fetal echocardiogram, and ultra fast fetal MRI. The ultrasound significant findings included an increased abdominal circumference, hepatomegaly, thickened placenta with numerous placental lakes, no tricuspid regurgitation, elevated cardiac output, dilated heart, and a dilation of the left internal jugular vein, left carotid artery, and superior vena cava. A fetal MRI revealed a VGAM at the midline superior to the third ventricle measuring one by 0.9 by 1.2 centimeters. Prominent arterial feeding vessels in the prepontine cistern and enlargement of the straight sinus. 
bilateral transverse sinuses, and bilateral sigmoid sinuses. At this point, the plan of care included serial monitoring with ultrasound evaluation for evidence of high drops and fetal echocardiograms for assessment of cardiac output and function with delivery at the outside institution. Timing would be determined pending follow-up evaluations, though term delivery was planned. At the patient's 33-week follow-up, a fetal echocardiogram was performed, which showed elevated combined cardiac output, though lower than at the prior exam, a holodiastolic flow reversal in the aortic arch, aortic isthmus diameter measuring 0.37 millimeters, moderately dilated right atrium, and trivial tricuspid regurgitation. At 36 weeks and four days gestation, the patient then presented again for a scheduled follow-up ultrasound evaluation. Although at this time, reassuring fetal status was noted, the patient was also noted to be in labor. She was recommended to go to labor and delivery for transfer to the outside institution due to the known diagnosis of the fetal VGAM. At 36 weeks and four days gestation, the patient presented to the UPMC Harrisburg Hospital labor and delivery in preterm labor. She subsequently delivered a male infant with APGAR scores of five at one minute, seven at five minutes via spontaneous vaginal delivery. The infant was noted to have a murmur and a cranial brewy, respiratory distress requiring intubation but no evidence of high drops. At five hours of life, once the infant was stabilized, the infant was transferred to the outside institution. The infant deceased following a number of interventions addressing the VGAM from an acute cerebral infarction. Paldini et al. suggested a diagnostic or prognostic flowchart where CNS lesions, tricuspid regurgitation, and VGAM volumes are used as variables to assess can be used as clinical cutoffs. Following this flowchart, this patient initially would have had a good prognostic prediction with the recommended obstetric management, including term delivery. Upon development of trace tricuspid regurgitation, however, referencing this same flowchart, the prognostic prediction would have changed to be likely poor with continued recommendation for term delivery. In reviewing the initial fetal evaluation, this fetus was noted to have cardiomegaly, dilation of the straight sinus, dilation of the superior vena cava, and dilation of the jugular vein. The follow-up echocardiogram, as referred to earlier at 33 weeks gestation, had then revealed the development of a dilated right atrium development of trace regurgitation and retrograde aortic flow. Poor prognosis has been consistently reported in cases of VGAM associated with each of these findings. VGAM is a rare, complex, congenital arterial venous malformation that is not yet well understood. Some variables based on small series or anecdotal descriptions from case reports have been suggested to be prognostic of poor outcomes. If a routine ultrasound reveals a cerebral cystic image in the midline area below the third ventricle with turbulent flow within the cyst, further evaluation with detailed neurosonography, fetal echocardiogram, and fetal MRI is warranted. Prenatal diagnosis of VGAM and all associated abnormalities are necessary in order to provide adequate parental counseling and develop an appropriate management plan. Further analysis of reported cases continues to be necessary in order to identify these prenatal prognostic indicators. Thank you very much for your time. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us via email and please feel free to use the QR code noted on this slide for supplemental images and information. Again, thank you for your time.